Good morning and welcome to another wonderful episode of Women Now. This week on Women Now, we talk about an important social issue, transgender. And then we're going to move on to an excellent interview with lawyer Garn Singh. It's a great show. Don't move a muscle. We'll be right back after these messages. You have a gender and a sex. A sex is how you're born. So if you're born, in my case, when I was born, my sex is a boy. But your gender is your brain and inside. So my gender is a girl. So transgender is practically you were born in the wrong body. I always used to say to mum, mum, when I grow up, I want to be a mummy. I always had tea towels on and I always used to put on girls' clothes and mum's dresses. When she was two or three, she always um, identified as a girl. And she always talked about having babies. By about year five in primary school, she was very unhappy if we cut her hair or if we didn't let her wear girls' clothes. And she would just tell us that she was a girl. I just, want, I just wanted her to keep, keep it under wraps, whatever was going on. Whether she was gay or trans, I just wanted her to survive high school. Now the term transgender means that you change your sexuality from being one to the other. Uh, today we are going to discuss about being a transgender, its impact, its psychological and uh, social impact, um, and whether or not it is okay for one person to come out in the open and uh, even announce to the world, and at what age that is right. And I'll tell you why we are talking about this as recently we had one political person, uh, Mr. Honda, Honda yeah. who, who announced that his eight-year-old granddaughter uh, has changed his sex to becoming a her mm -hmm. and uh, there was a big controversy around it why he should have announced to the world maybe he shouldn't have uh, talked about it and yep. many other things around it yep. and I had my own stand on why uh, it was okay for him because he's providing more security to the child yep. uh, but there was a whole world thinking that age eight maybe it's not the right age to even know what your sexuality is mm -hmm. and now what's your take on that well you know I was kind of on your side of the fence on this one I thought that what he did was very courageous I thought that it takes a lot of guts to stand up and say that this is you know uh, what I believe in and this is my own grandchild and it creates a lot of awareness it's all about awareness and I think that we have the benefit of living uh, in a great place where people are a lot more open-minded about things and even if they're not open-minded about things these kinds of things can help people to open their mind mm -hmm. so I think that for you know Congressman Mike Honda to come out and do this yeah some may question it that you know as an eight-year-old mm -hmm. child do you really want to expose mm -hmm. uh, this child to that but then mm -hmm. maybe if he does this it'll help change the views of a few people so that mm -hmm other children that are going through this don't have to maybe suffer through some of the stigmatism that's mm -hmm. associated with it. So it takes somebody like him, uh, and I applaud to stand, you, to stand yeah. up, to take a stand. Right, and people uh, in power are the only people who can make a lot of change. Psychological issue that Manish was talking, in fact there was this survey uh, on the transgender people in San Francisco, and one out of every three had actually said that they attempted a suicide, which was, um, you know, No, is it horrible. because they are not able to live with their new sexuality or because of the social pressure? Yes, there is both. I mean, there is obviously a huge societal pressure, like the stigma that you're talking about. And there is also uh, this whole insecurity, emotional and physical, about uh, knowing your true gender identity because they are always in between that phase about the behavioral manifestation and the physical manifestation and then actually going about knowing your sense of sexuality and that identity is kind of uh, very blurred. <laughs> now you know my conda and you know what would you say to him if you met him uh, in this No I what would applaud say? and I would yeah. commend him for having that courage uh, but the question really was about the 8 year old and was yeah. it uh, the right age because at 8 years you're not able to decide a lot of things and yeah. your guardians your parents uh, they are deciding them for you so was it the right thing how do you know the child 
who's now eight years old uh, wouldn't want to change his or her mind later on and was it the right thing for the parents to even uh, indulge and even give that the child the opportunity to decide uh, that's the thing because at eight I mean there's nothing about sexuality at that age yeah. how do you know I've always known exactly who I am I was a girl trapped in a boy's body growing up has been quite a struggle being transgender especially in middle school some kids greet each other with hugs and then just give me a hi. And sometimes I've even been called an it. So I basically kept myself. I mean, that's a tough, that's a big question, right? Mm -hmm. That's the big question mark that, was this the right time to do Time it, to do, you know? but also I would say since the child is already making public appearances like the child is going to the school, child is mixing with her uh, relatives, her family, her cousins, their friends, the locality. So that exposure has begun. And with that comes uh, this uh, whole recognition of the situation and how to deal with it. So my Konda was saying in his interview that he hoped that she doesn't get bullied in school, which is like a huge issue in America. Yeah. And um, it just uh, to, for her to cope up because these questions are going to come up in some form or the other and um, I guess it helps to be prepared and more knowledgeable about this. Now, I believe the sense of security once you know that my parents are okay with it my grandfather right. is okay with it mm -hmm. I think the sense of security that comes with it as opposed to living in that life of lie that mm -hmm. you know I am something but I can't talk about it mm -hmm. and my parents have to hide it my grandparents have to hide right. it that life of lie is more dangerous, dangerous. and more um, you know it'll affect uh, a child more uh, psychologically. Absolutely. Because you see, California as a state here in the Bay Area, uh, the state uh, laws, they kind of promote equal rights, equal opportunity at work, and all that is there in place. In spite, there are so many challenges. Of course, the social challenges are one aspect of it. Then you have this whole um, medical plan. You know, I was just going through this, which is pretty incredible, that if this person uh, wants to do some kind of sex reassignment surgery uh, there are not um, you know very well descriptive med medical plans that actually cover them so it's you know it would have to be out of their own expense uh, yeah most of it. the time because uh, uh, it's it's the health insurance kind of uh, you know it's not uh, very it's descriptive not yeah it's not very inclusive about what be. all exactly it covers and what all it doesn't so oftentimes these people have to go for psychological counseling even with some Sometimes their mental health is not covered and um, so, so are you saying that health insurance do not cover a transgender person no they do have uh, access to health insurance but the sex a reassignment uh, oh. surgery yeah. you know yeah. so that sometimes the logic? Um, because this is a physical and a medical problem I mean uh, they should have no uh, logic behind not supporting that right well I mean, the thing is mental... it's not a disease right so it's oftentimes um, uh, provoked by that person's personal choice on what uh, well, sex that um, right? exactly the, you know, so if it's a health risk or issue right um, but then you're looking at it from the other side that well it is a health issue because that makes mental, yeah. health, right? so mental it's a, health it's on both sides mm -hmm. it's on both sides it's a tough issue I mean, uh, is. yeah i mean for our viewers i think uh, spend a little bit more time be inclusive and learn more about uh, transgender and how you can uh, help uh, become a part of this larger community uh, when we come back, we are going to talk to Karn Singh, who is an entrepreneur, a lawyer, and it was a wonderful conversation that Kajal Shahani had with him. I'm not going All her friends like, if you're really a guy, you should be like start lifting weights now. Really? <laughs> you won't believe how many times I've gotten lifting weight comments. Why don't you lift weights if you're a guy? That the only kind of guy that exists on the planet in your world? <laughs> what world are you in? It must be really boring since everyone's the same.